Now tell us what this is. <laughs> this is like a masturbation ring. And you can have it hot or cold, or like room temperature. And I didn't know it was a masturbation ring. I, I thought it was like an L separate um, a bit hardcore. And can you demonstrate how you use it? Uh, well, right now it's not the best condition. You have the woman's size and the man's size. Yeah. <laughs> what size do you have? Man, it's right <laughs> <laughs> but then it, you know, it made me realize that maybe the L Zapparati bracelet from Tiffany is not so innocent. Oh. <laughs> maybe there's like a secret use behind it because I find it very similar. And it's silver, you know, so it doesn't rust or anything. I mean, it might get dark, but... It doesn't know, corrode. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> so tell us about your collection. It came to be, I met the Mr. Casbrand three years ago when they did the Tracy Emin collaboration. And Colette, I was playing the music for the party and we, we talked, you know, like, and I got a nice feeling from them. And then Jeremy did bags for them last a year and a half ago in Japan. And they flew me over to Tokyo to play at the party for Jeremy. And I thought, and I was thinking like, I mean, I like bags, you know. <laughs> and when I pack up, you know, all the time, like all my shit, all my cables, all my iPods and chargers and stuff like that, I said, I was tired of using Ziploc bags or whatever I could find to be practical. And, uh, and I thought, maybe I should ask him if we could do something together. And I just called him up and we did it. And that's it, you know. It's not like I designed and I like sketched or anything <laughs> like that, you know. It's not at all. I mean, I just came up with the ideas. And so the idea is a functional yeah, yeah, solution functional to... And, and also, the, I want it to be accessible. I don't want it to be like something you're going to pay, you know, $50,000 for a DJ bag from whatever, you know, which that doesn't make any sense to me unless you're like, you know, an old queen. And you also um, designed the print that's used? I did not really, no, I didn't design the print. The guys who did the print are from Brussels. I mean, I met them through Colette because they did the. Uh, they did a few, art, a little bit of artwork for the Colette CDs, and I really like what they did. And what's their name? Their name is Base, okay. the agency called Base, and um, and we and but I did the research of what I wanted. You know, it was like like I say, it was from memory lane because in in the eighties I worked in a record store in Paris, and we had a poster for the store that was really cool. It was like a hyper realistic dr uh, drawing of the Arc de Triomphe in the Champs Elysees at night, and there were like vinyls flying like flying saucers, you know. And I really liked that image, even when it first started. It was not something retro. So, and, and I was thinking, you know, like, and, and, and I like the idea of having an analog print for digital lifestyle because everyone, oh, I like that. everyone likes t the look of the cassette is cool. You know, like when you look at old things, like old yeah. technical stuff, it looks like, oh, it's cool. You know, but, oh my God, it looks so cool because like, everything, everyone thinks an iPod is cool, but like, it's not, it's not so cool. You know what I mean? You have to like, whatever. Sometimes something so I thought the design would be warmer, like for something that's a bit colder. I mean, and also, I mean, a lot of people use digital stuff, but because they have to, you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people who don't use it if they didn't have to, right? You know, because they go crazy with the whole thing. So tell us what you're working on these days, because the the last time I saw you was in Barcelona, and I know that you've been on vacation since then, and I know that you have a lot of projects in the works. So maybe you can tell us about that. Sure. Well, I mean, uh, the thing is, I was, I mean, you know, after vacation, it was to be back here, and then I, you know, and then I went to, I went to Mumbai to do a party there, and then wow. I went from Mumbai to. And what Bay. party was that? It was for a Gucci store opening okay. in Mumbai. I mean, I never went to India, and I didn't know what to expect, you know, and uh, and I really liked it. I mean, um, so I was happy about that because then I went, we went to Beijing for to do the Fendi show on the Red Wall of China. People, some people may think I'm jaded, but I don't think I am. But honestly, it's one of the things that we remember the most. And and so I came, and then I went to Rome. So for work? Uh, for yes, for H and M and Roberto Cavalli. All oh, right. That was also very fun. Another type of Dolce Vita. And uh, now I'm here. And next stop is uh, I'm going to Berlin for fun. No work. And what do you do for fun in Berlin? Um, and never mind the conversation we just had. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, there's some of that, obviously, and uh, I'm going to bring my ring to Berlin. I'm that's, sure that's you will. Sure. And um, I buy records, I go see exhibitions, I see friends, just hang around. I think it's like the most metal, I mean, the nicest city in Europe because it's very, it's quite young, quite free, and uh, even though the Berliners complain there's not much happening, but it seems like. 
it doesn't know any boundaries for now, you know, so I, 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 and it feels like anything is possible. So I would go out to the Panorama Bar. <laughs> and it's, have you been there? Yes. I mean, it's the most amazing club on earth. <laughs> you know, it's like, there's one movie scene I like a lot from a disco, from a, in a club, it's from Basic Instinct, you know, Sharon Stone and that, and the rock sound when they go into that club and you see that big, on the big screen. Right. And when you walk, when you walk into Panorama, it's, what you imagine a, a, a club should be like, you know, it's like this big factory in the middle of the field, and and you walk in, it's the space is so big. You have a Wolfgang Kellmann's painting that's like maybe 25 meters large, you know, and that's all there is on one floor. And then you go up, and you have all these people like dancing and like it's huge, fucking and doing like yeah, everything fucking they have to in corners from and, Friday yeah. evening until Monday morning. They don't stop, you know. Yeah. So it's like okay. <laughs> Where was the last time you saw something like this? You know, and I like to know. Never this. in America. No, but I don't want to do that every day. But like to know that you can do that, I think it's nice. You know, that's like there's an option. It's not just like being PC <laughs> and going down the tunnel. You know. Well, it's very nice to see you again, Michel. Thank you. It's great to have you in New York. Thank you very much.